Hello and welcome to Commodore 128 Assembly Language Programming. Um, today we're going to be working on something um, that's not a program, um, it's just going to be a routine that can be used in programs. It's going to be a fast block copy routine, um, or I'm going to call it page copy, but I'll explain that in a second. And this will be for just copying a block of memory or page of memory to another one and along the way hopefully we're going to learn some things about how you can move um, page 0 and page 1 around in the Commodore 128 in uh, useful ways. So I've created a file here page copy.a to be the, um, the source file. Um, this won't like I say this won't normally be a completed program we'll have a program we can run um, for testing here but normally this will be a, a file that you would include in other files. Um, by the way, you can get all the files at my website, aaron.baher.biz, right there, if you haven't seen any of these before. Okay, so first we'll write just a, let's see, I'm going to get into assembly mode here. First we'll write just um, a simple, a simple one, we'll call it simple copy. And this one will just... copy a page as simply as possible. So typically what you do is you load an index register with zero and let's let's say we want to copy page four to page six. We'll use those just because they're in uh, screen memory and so we'll be able we'll be able to see it hap we'll be able to see what happens. So we want to load a with um, from 400 comma X uh, store a into 600 comma x increment x branch of not equal back up to here which will be right there and return okay that's that's basically your you know your your basic copy routine to copy a block of memory from 400 to 4 ff up to 600 6 ff and you could put whatever you know whatever starting and ending points in or start what you put whatever source and destination page you want in there so if we jump to subroutine simple copy and then let's just put a break if we assemble that we're going to get this copy routine so let's do that I call oh page copy that's right I think I have to get in the right directory yeah. page copy okay so then if we go to 1300 you can see on the Commodore screen it, it copied the the top chunk down it's not lined up correctly because it doesn't doesn't work out evenly but it copied from 400 to 4 ff which is the top almost quarter of the screen or a little more than a quarter of the screen down to 606 ff which is kind of the the third quarter of the screen okay so that's our that's our basic copy routine that you can knock out in a second um, but here's the thing if we start thinking about how long these processes take you know how long does this actually we can figure out how long this actually takes to run so to do that we need to go to our book which is um, in this case the Commodore 128 programmers reference guide and you look here on page 178 you've got a chart of all the all the operations and how long they take in cycles which a clock cycle um, in the Commodore 128 as long as you're in 40 column mode which we're going to be for all this stuff is one millionth of a second. You have one million clock cycles per second, one megahertz. So all these things are, are in clock cycles. So if we look at, we're, we're loading A from an absolute address index. So indexed absolute, and go back to our chart. That's going to be, so here's absolute X. Come down to load A four cycles for that and the star after it means it's you get another cycle if you cross a page boundary we're not crossing any page boundaries here because we're, we're staying 
we're specifically staying within a page. So that's four cycles. Let's look at the store then. Again, the same thing. We're looking for absolute, comma x, store a. That's five cycles. You got an extra. You got another cycle there. Okay, the increment x I think is two cycles. Let's just check. Yes, two cycles for that. And the branch if not equal. is also two and this can also get you an extra cycle if you're crossing over oh add one cycle if the branch is taken okay that's what they're yeah and then add another one if you're crossing a page boundary we're not going to cross page boundary in this case um, since we're starting at 1300 with our program but we are going to have to add one when the branch is taken which is going to be each time it loops until it finishes looping so that's going to be three for each branch, if not equal. So three there. All right. So that's our loop. We also have a couple of cycles up here for loading X and the, and one down here for the return. But um, but these are, these are the ones that get done every time through the loop, 256 times. So if you add these up, you get 14. So 14 times 256 times through the loop. three thousand five hundred and eighty four cycles so if we put that so that's millionths of a cycle so that's three and a half milliseconds basically which isn't that much time you, know, you think okay well if my program only needs to do this once or if it's only going to do this once every minute or something that's nothing would you know I'm not even going to worry about that but if this is something it needs to do like say every 60th of a second because you're trying to do some animation then then that starts to matter um, so you'd like to make it faster if you could for situations like that the other problem with this routine or the, probably the bigger problem is that it's inflexible this this routine only copies from 400 to 600 what if you want to copy a page from 500 to 700 or you know 20 page 23 to page 8b or something like that well you you'd have to write other routines to do those or you could write one routine that is flexible so let's write flex copy and let's say flex copy copy one page to another source page in x and destination page in Y. All right, so when we call flex copy, we'll put the source page we want to copy from in the X register and the destination page in the Y register, and then we'll let flex copy use them as it needs to. All right, to do that, we're going to need to use a couple of zero page locations. So I'll set those up up top here just to keep things a little organized. Um, so we'll call source, or we, well, it's an address, address source. We'll put the first one at FA and destination at FC. So you've seen this before. If you watch the other, the other videos, we need a couple of zero page locations to use for indirect addressing. So the first thing flex copy needs to do is set those up. So it needs to put zeros in as the low bytes. So we're going to store that in the source and store it in destination because everything we're doing here is always aligned on a page boundary. So if if source is if if our source page if, like if x is 23, we want to start at 2300. 0, 0 and same thing with y whatever y is it's going to be y zero zero and so the low byte of source and destination are both going to be zero zero then we store x as our source into source plus one because that's the high byte and store y into destination plus one all right so we've set up our two pointers now um, that we're going to use when we do the indirect addressing now need to, to 
well, let's see. Now we need, we have to use Y now as our loop. We can't use X like I did in simple copy. It didn't matter in simple copy. Here it matters because now you can only do the indirect, the indirect indexed addressing with Y. And so now we have the actual loop part, except this time we're going to load from source comma Y and store it in destination comma y both of those being indirect then we're going to increment y branch if not equal back up and return and we're going to branch if not equal back up to the load a again so this part you know this this part basically looks like this part this one up here except now we're using indirect addressing and we had to set up our indirect addresses first but how long does this take? Well, again, let's look at the loop part. Um, load a indirect um, with a y indirect takes four cycles, plus one if you're crossing a page boundary, but we're not, so that's four cycles. Well, that's the same as up above. Store a into y indirect oh, wait a second sorry I looked at the wrong one that's that's absolute y indirect I'm looking for this one which is in in you know, sorry I'm, I'm I keep saying indirect too many times what it, four cycles is absolute y indexed on y there's no indirection there you don't see any parentheses I hope this is I don't know if this is blown up big enough um, for the video uh, maybe I can Let's see, here we go. So we have, um, let me scroll it to where you can see it. All right, so this column right here is the indirect Y column. So we're looking for load A in that column and it's five. All right, so that's five cycles. I thought it was more than the other one. And then store A, again, indirect, then the next to last column is six cycles. Okay, so we've got six there. Everything else is the same. We have two for the increment on a register. We have three for the branch. And so now in the loop part of this, we have five, six, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 cycles. And now we're up to 4096 cycles which is 4 milliseconds you know just over 4 milliseconds now we also have a few more cycles up here but it's not you know it's not really hard it's not enough to count i mean basically you're looking at like let's see well what is a store and does store a and the zero page that's 3 same thing with the store X and store Y into zero page. So if we if we count those, this is three, another three there, another three, and another three. And so we're adding in this up here, I think is three. So let me check that. Load a immediate with a number. It might be no, it's two. Okay. So loading A with zero takes two. So you've got an extra fourteen cycles total up here before the loop starts that you didn't have in simple copy, but still that's not that that's not the big deal. The big deal is what has to happen every time through the loop, so it gets multiplied by two hundred and fifty six. Um but if we added that to this, you know, it'd push you just over 4,100. All right. So that's more flexible, but it's also slower. We didn't gain any speed. We lost some speed. <clears throat> so what if we could make simple copy more flexible without going to these indirect addressing modes, which take more cycles? Well, you can do that. Um, Let's see, what should we call it? Um, let's 
let's see, let's call it hard copy. If we take simple copy and just copy it to hard copy, one thing we can do is make these, basically make it self-modifying because these commands are data, you know, they are numbers in memory and so we can change them as the program is running. So let's say we put a, let's, let's put a label here, first of all. Um, let's call this one, let's call this source, or well, let's call this um, XX. And let's call this one YY. Okay. And then we're going we're gonna to change this branch to XX because there's not a minus sign there anymore. Um, okay, it's still the same routine. We've just added some labels. But now we also want it to do this thing where the source page can be an X and the destination page can be in Y. So how do we do that? Well, here's how we do that. We store X into XX plus 2 and we store Y into YY plus 2. All right. Now, what does what does that do? What's that going to you know, what's that actually going to do for us? Um what that's going to do is, if you, if you think about what this actually looks like in code, um, let's go to the monitor here. Here's our here's our simple copy routine right here. Okay. Well, if you look at the machine code for load A 400 comma X, it looks like this. Here's the load A, here's the low byte of the address, and here's the high byte of the address. So our, if we look at our label then, our label for that line is XX. So XX, the assembler, the assembler takes that label and says, okay, XX points to 1306. If you add 2 to that, here's 1306, so here's 1307, here's 1308. What happens then is you're putting the you're putting the x you're putting the value of x you're storing x right here, and then you're storing y right here by using y y plus two, and then you let the routine run and it's going to use those addresses regardless of what was in here originally when you wrote the program. All right, so let's take a look at that. First of all, I didn't I didn't test test. I didn't test flex copy, did I? So let's test flex copy first of all and just make sure that works. Um, okay, I think it I think it did, but I've got to let's see. kind of clear the 600 section of the screen and then okay go again oh, something didn't work what did I forget to do so flex copy has a problem what is the problem um, wasn't expecting that. Good thing I looked. So it jumps to 1310, which this is this is flex copy right here. It's storing the values into the memory locations. Oh, we never. Sorry, we never set up x and y. We never put the values in there before calling flex copy. That was kind of dumb. All right. So before we call flex copy, because flex copy again expects the source page in x. I guess that's how people usually write it, and the destination page in y. So we've got to put them there, don't we? So load x with page four. 
load Y with page 6, and then that will... That should make it work. Okay, yeah. So let's... If we move that stuff... I just want to put some stuff on the top of the screen that we can tell when it copies that stuff to the bottom. So there's the word Commodore and electronics and so on. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, and there it copied it down lower on the screen. So that works. <coughs> Alright, so flex copy works. Let's try hard copy. Now, before we run hard copy, I'm going to change this because I've we don't know what this is going to be, so let's use um, FF and FF, okay. because hard copy is going to replace that, so it doesn't matter what it is to start out with. We just want it to be something other than 4 and 6, so we can make sure it worked right. All right, assemble. And I'm not sure, did I, let's see, 1328, yeah, it, um, let's see, 1328. Store X and XX plus 2. Store Y and YY plus 2. That should... Unless I'm forgetting how, how to do that, that should work. So what am I doing wrong? Oh, no, it did. No, wait a second. It did do the right thing. I've got a here, let's let's load fresh first of all. Okay, and reset. Okay. Let's look at the code. So we're loading X with four, Y with six, and then we're jumping to hard copy at thirteen twenty eight. So let's look at thirteen twenty eight. We're storing X into thirteen thirty two which will be right here, but for right now, that's FF. Okay. And then this is branching back up to here, so yeah, that all looks, that all looks correct, I believe, so let's try it. Yeah, okay, so that works. I couldn't tell before the screen was so messy, but that also works. So now we have a routine that still is simple copy. It doesn't have it doesn't have any indirect addressing, so it should be a little faster than the indirect version, you know, flex copy up here. But it is self-modifying code, which can be a little, which can be awkward, can be buggy. Um, it should be just as fast as, you know, it's going to be just as fast as simple copy, so we're still looking at three and a half, you know, a little more than three and a half milli, uh, milliseconds. So how could we make it faster? Well, now we're going to get to the zero page and page one stuff. Um, on the Commodore 128, thanks to the MMU, you can move zero page and page one around. You can basically swap them with other pages in memory um, on the fly. And you can have the processor, when it goes to zero page, actually be looking at some other page. And the same thing with page one. So we'll call this one fast copy. So let's take let's take our loop, put it down here, copy by moving page zero and one to source and destination. Okay. So this will this should be interesting. So here's the thing. What if we could replace this load A? from an absolute address with load A 
into a zero page address, comma x. Well, if we look at back at the book here, loading a from zero page indexed, is four cycles. So that doesn't actually gain us anything. That's still four cycles. Let me check that, make sure I'm looking at the right thing. Yeah, zero page comma x, okay. But on the store side, when we store it, what if we could replace the store with a push to the stack? That would only be two, or did I see two or three? That would be three cycles. So now we're, now we're saving two cycles every time through the loop off of our simple copy routine. And we're not having to do any self-modifying code, although we are going to do some other stuff that's a little trickier. So um, let's get rid of that. And we'll figure out at the end what, what's actually involved. All right. So how can we move zero page and page one? That's, question, that's the first question. Um, for that, we'll switch to a different book here. This one's called Commodore 128 Internals. And let's see here. And it talks here about the, the page pointer. This is explained in the um, Programmer's Reference Guide too, but this book goes into more detail a lot of times on the actual hardware um, registers and bits and, and pins and stuff. Um, so if you can't find a detailed explanation of something or a detailed enough explanation of something in the programmer's reference guide, this is a good one to check, the internals book. Um, it goes into more detail on the, the electronics and stuff. But anyway, it's got a good explanation here of the page pointers. So the MMU in the Commodore 128 has page pointers for page 0 and page 1. And they're right here. Um, let's, let's blow this up, actually. So the pointer for zero page is at D507 and D508, and the pointer for page one, which is normally the stack, is D509, D508. So normally, this one is pointing to, to zero page, and this one is pointing to page one, but you can move them. Now, this can be a little confusing at first because they talk here about the low order byte and the high order byte, but in each case, the high order byte, which is the second one, is the one that determines what bank of memory you're in. And so we're just going to leave that set to zero, um, not mess with it. The low one is the one that actually determines what page it's pointed to. So if we look at, we've got D507, if we go to the monitor, or, well, let's see, D50A, that's our four, Okay, so here's the zero page pointer. This says bank zero, and this says it's pointing to page zero. So that's, that's normal. And then here's the page one pointer, which again says bank zero, page one. So these would be the default settings. But you can change them. So if you change this one, the first one, D507, you're pointing, you're telling the MMU to swap page zero with whatever value you put there. And if you change this one, you're telling it to swap page one, the stack page, with whatever value you put there. So that what happens then is anytime you work with the stack, you're actually working with the other page and not the real physical page one. And the same thing here, anytime you do zero page instructions, you're actually talking to some other page in memory instead of the physical first page of memory. All right, so, all right, so how do we use that? Well, first of all, this is going to change to just zero, zero, because we're going to be in zero page. This is going to change, like I said, to a PHA, and we'll get to the We'll get to the details of that in a bit. So let's just clean this up and get, there's our basic loop. All right. So what we're going to do is 
every time through the loop we're going to grab a value out of zero page indexed on x so that we go through the whole zero page and we're going to push it on the stack and then we're going to increment x and loop again so this is going to loop 256 times because we're looping on x from zero around to zero and when we push 256 values on the stack that is going to fill up the stack page so we're going to copy and so that's how we're going to copy the you know what I just realized something I need to make sure that yeah when you push yeah we can't just we can't just push them on the stack willy-nilly um, okay yeah we'll, we'll get to that in a second but when you push on the stack let's like right now let's see where the, where is the stack pointer right now the stack pointer is is EF which means the next time I push something on the stack if we look if we look at the stack here's the stack here's EF so the next time I push something on the stack the stack pointer is going to move up to here probably well I guess it's gonna move it's gonna move up to here to EE and push the next thing on there so if we want to we don't want to copy things in the wrong locations so we want to take you know we want the thing that comes out of the first spot in zero page to end up here not down here somewhere um, this it would actually if I just did it like I've written it so far it would copy everything backwards because the stack goes in bottom to top so before we push before we start pushing on the stack we're going to have to um, make sure that we put the stack pointer in the right place okay so we do that with TXS we'll have to figure out what that value needs to be this will have to change let's see yeah this will just have to become decrement X because since the stack is going to work from the end of the stack to the beginning or you know from from the bottom of the stack up to the top um, we need to go through zero page the same way I'm, prob I'm probably not explaining this very well but hopefully it'll make more sense when we get into it okay now the thing about doing this the thing about moving page 0 and page 1 to different locations in memory is your program is not the only program that's running in in the Commodore in, in normal use um, it's not a multitasking system but it still has to have other things running sometimes or otherwise it couldn't function it couldn't get your keyboard presses and it couldn't it, it couldn't uh, update certain things it couldn't like um, oh, I don't know it doesn't really need that to it, it, the, the VIC chip is separate so it's updating the display and it's doing its own thing but basically the the computer needs to stop your program once in a while so it can do its stuff so it can do things like check the keyboard update the keyboard buffer um, check the RS-232 buffer to see if if there's a modem connecting uh, you know that that kind of stuff so all that stuff has to happen and so what the computer has is an interrupt routine on a timer so that 60 times a second every 60th of a second it interrupts and takes over it just it stops your program sticks your programs registers and 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 where it's where it's currently at the program counter um, and its status flag sticks all that on the stack goes off and does its own thing and then comes back and reloads your program up and sets it off running again so that's happening 60 times a second in normal operation what that means is you can't just be moving the zero page off somewhere else because the interrupt routines use zero page too they use it a lot and the same way with the stack they're going to be using the stack so you can't just stick the stack off somewhere else in memory you'll break all that you'll break that interrupt routine so what you have to do is when you start this routine is set the interrupt flag and what that does is it tells the computer 
don't interrupt this this routine and then at the end of the routine you clear that interrupt flag which tells the computer okay it's all right to interrupt now so we need to block interrupts while we're doing this business or otherwise we'll just crash the computer because as soon as the interrupt routine tries to access zero page it won't find what it's looking for there and or it'll try to get something it'll try to put something off the stack or get something off the stack and, and nothing will work so while we're doing this while while we have page zero and page one copied somewhere else or pointed somewhere else and are doing our copy we've got to tell the computer you, you can't interrupt this because it'll it'll crash you if you do all right so so our source is still going to be in x just like we did before our destination is still going to be in y so if we look back at the book the pointer for zero page is D507. The pointer for page one is D509. So we need to store X into D507. Store Y into D509. So as soon as we do that, they move. And so that's why we had to set the interrupts before we do that. All right. And our own our own program can't like be doing anything else with the zero page or the or the stack because we're we're just wanting to copy the one from one to the other. All right. So right there we set them to the new locations, then at the end before we clear the interrupts, we need to set them back. So we'll load x with 0 store that into D507. That's the zero page location, then we'll increment x and store that into D509 and that will put things back to normal back to 0 and 1 as being their their proper locations put a comment there restore to normal all right you can tell fast copy here is already getting more complicated so again you wouldn't do this unless you really need the speed unless you really need to shave some cycles off all right, so once we've moved zero page, we set our index up. Um, now, let me think here. Transferring X to S, that's, that is not a very common thing. So I need to check and just make sure I've got the right thing there. Yeah, transfer stack pointer to X or X to stack pointer, TXX, yeah, transfer X to stack pointer. So what that is going to do, let's see. I'm not sure when you, when you um, copy the stack pointer, or when you push on the stack, I'm trying to remember when you push on the stack, if it moves the pointer first and then puts the thing there, or if it puts the thing there and then moves the pointer to the next spot, I can't remember. Um, I guess we'll just try it and find out. And the way this is going to work then, let's see. I think is I think we're gonna have an off by one error here, but we'll find out. Okay, so we're gonna load it from zero zero x, push it on the stack, decrement x, wrap around. All right. So let's try that. Probably cause all sorts of terrible things to happen. All right. So if it works, it should copy 400 to 600 and so on, and then return things to normal. So thirteen hundred. Oh no. <laughs> okay. That was interesting. 
um, whatever it was doing, it kept doing it. Um, let's see here. What could have been going wrong? Oh, 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 yeah, I forgot one thing, or probably more than one thing. When you do this, <clears throat> you need to save the stack pointer somewhere because you need to put it back to the, the stack pointer that was wherever the stack wherever the stack pointer was pointing to when fast copy started, you need to restore it at the end too. So where can we save it? Let's see. Um, well, why don't we just save it in X? Transfer stack pointer to X. Let's use Y as our index here. Um, you can't transfer y to x. x x or sorry you can't transfer y to the stack pointer or back and forth x is the only one that can exchange with the stack pointer um, let's loop that on y or no way we got to have x there we can't we can't use x into zero page for load a We're just going to have to shuffle things around a little bit but anyway up here we get we transfer the stack pointer to x so when we get down here we want to transfer X back to the stack pointer. And since we're not using Y, let's transfer Y to X. Can we transfer Y to X? I don't think we can. No, you can transfer X and Y to A, but not, okay. Let's not get too complicated. Let's just set up another location here. call it temp that's fe we will just save now wait a second I gotta stop and think that's that's a zero page location so if we're going to use that we've got to use it before this business before we move before we relocate those so we need to transfer stack to X and then store X into temp and then do this stuff and then at the end after we move them back load X back out of temp and transfer X to S. So basically just reversing what we did up here. So we start the routine, transfer the stack pointer to X, store that away in temp, then relocate things. Then at the end, unrelocate things, get X back out of temp and transfer it to the stack pointer and then clear or interrupt. So okay. I think that I think that's correct. So now what about our loop here? Is this still okay? Load X was zero transfer X to the stack pointer that's fine all right let's um let's try that see if we've broken anything else drastically I think it worked that time because um, there was stuff on the there was random stuff on the top of the screen and it copied it down I think uh, let's find out um What's it, 400 and 4FF? That. Well, no, that's not gonna that's not gonna work because the screen move the problem is the screen moves around after you do your after you do the thing. Um, so 606 FF is gonna look different because the screen moved after you know, if the screen moves after the program is done running, then obviously it's not gonna match up. Um, Yeah, it's copying stuff, but it's not copying it from the right page from the looks of it. Interesting. 
So what's going wrong here? Um, load A, push A. Let's um. So the question is, where is it getting these values? Okay, so right now, if I look at 400 to 4FF, you've got the 1 and the question mark up there in the corner, 31, 3F. And then if we look at 600 to 6FF, that's just going to be spaces. All right. So let's run it. Hmm. It's getting stuff, but I don't know where it's getting it from. So the question is, maybe our zero page location isn't, isn't getting located correctly, because it's getting filled in with a bunch of stuff that's coming from somewhere else. Um... I wonder if I have a bank issue. I do. I have a bank issue. Um, or, well, no, that's that's the real zero page. Maybe maybe things didn't get unrelocated. What do we got at D five oh seven? No, they've been unrelocated. It sort of appears like the stack is getting relocated, but zero page isn't. Because that looks a lot like what is ending up. I, I probably do have a bank issue. Let's come back. Let's just make sure. Let's just select the default bank that has everything mapped in. Let's reset just to be sure. still not doing the thing um, okay it still seems like it's getting because <clears throat> if we compare or let's let's do it in the actual computer over here <clears throat> if we compare oh, dang it. yeah there what why can't I exit the there we go So there's our, well, yeah, that's going to keep changing every time. Um, I guess that's not the way to do it. Let me come back here. Copy. Okay, so copied a bunch of crap into the middle of the screen. And then broke and went to the end of the screen, so... I thought that using screen memory would be a good idea because we could see it. The problem is it also moves it every time you do it. And so, or, well, it moves it if your cursor is towards the bottom and it needs to scroll the screen up. So let's, um, let's do it again with the screen like that. Okay. And then let's do it one more time. all the way to the top.
Okay. So what do we have now at 600? 6F. F, we have 2F73, and I bet if we look at zero page, there's 2F73. So it appears that we're still copying from the actual zero page and not the relocated zero page. And because the relocated zero page is at 400, and for some reason we're not getting that. So why is that? We're storing X into D507. Oh, geez. Huh, <sighs> yeah. I mean, look at what I'm doing there. I'm I'm getting I'm supposed to be getting X from the calling routine, which calls fast copy, and then I'm and then I'm immediately clobbering X by transferring the stack pointer to it. I can't do that. That's dumb. Um, how am I going to do that? Uh, well, we'll just have we'll have to transfer. transfer X to A and then we'll store A into temp here. So we transfer X to A to get it out of the way so that we can use X to... Oh wait a second, no, I'm getting backwards. This is still X, this is A. Okay. Alright, let's walk through this. We transfer X to A, this is the source page. Transfer X to S to X get stack pointer in X store stack pointer in temp okay and then set zero page to source page okay and then set page one to destination page okay yeah, I was just I was I was trying to use X for two different things there, and that was not going to work. Hey, all right. Let's um. Move my move my cursor back to the top. Okay, it looked like it worked that time. It copied this this block of stuff from up here to down here. But now we need to see if it actually copied it true. If it got if it got it aligned on the right boundaries. So, let's look at um, 400. Uh, we start out with a bunch of zeros and then we get to here at 428, we get to 2 12 5 1. So let's look at 600. And yeah, we get the same thing, 2, 12, 5, 1. We are getting, you know, that's interesting. We are getting the first two values out of zero page still. I'm thinking, so that's, that's ringing a bell. Um... It's ringing a bell that locations 0 and 1 always go through to the real 0 page even if even if you relocate it. I don't know if that's here in this book. That could be a problem for our program though. I mean, if we can't use those two bytes, that really does affect what we're trying to do here. Um doesn't say it there it must have been it must have been somewhere else but I think I think there is something like that I think location 0 and 1 because they're hardwired to certain things they're hardwired to like the data direction register and something else I think you may not be able 
I think though I think those two bytes might be hardwired. Um, so, <clears throat> so maybe we can't use zero page as our source block, but that's really okay because we weren't gaining any speed right here anyway, getting from the source block. It was four cycles to load. Um, it was four cycles back up here in in hard copy anyway, so we can just use this method for the source block. Our real gain is in pushing onto the stack. Um, so let's do that. Let's set this back to FF, like in hard copy. And then let's give this a label. Um, call it X2 because we're going to add 2 to it. And then this branch here back to X2. We don't need to, well, we still need to set up the stack pointer. We still need to store the stack pointer away. The difference is going to be we're not going to set zero page. We're not going to we're not going to move zero page. We're still going to move the stack. We're still going to move page one. We're not going to move zero page. We're going to move or we're going to set the page at x two plus two. That's going to set up our page just like we did up here in hard copy. Um. In fact, we don't need to do this business of transferring it to X because now we can just store X into X2 plus 2. We don't need to transfer it there. We don't need to do this. Okay, so we'll make sure we, we're doing everything we need to do here. Um, okay, so we get, we set we're not going to set the zero. We're going to set source page by storing the source page from the X register into this byte right here by saying X2 plus 2. Then we're going to put the stack pointer in X so that we can save it in temp. And then, then we relocate page 1. Then we get down here we don't need to do this anymore. We don't need to restore zero page because we're not messing with it. So this can just be load X with one, store that there. Load X out of temp, transfer that to the stack pointer and we're good. Okay, I think that should work. So this is still gonna be four cycles. It's just not gonna use zero page anymore. But this is going from five cycles to three cycles. So let's see if that works. I it looks like it did. It's kind of hard to tell because it's still copying the same stuff. Um, let's uh, well, let's just reset. That'll give us a screen that we can tell what's going on. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that worked. It copied it down. So if we look at the memory from 400, we get at 420, we get a lot of spaces, but then at 428, we get 2003 OFOD. And if we look at 600, the same thing, 2003 OFOD. Okay, so it is copying around. Now let's look at let's look at 400 to 4FF. Let's look all the way to the end. Well, it ends with spaces, but the last line is is 12.05.0.104. 12.05.0.104. Okay, so it looks like it's getting the as far as I can tell. It looks like it's getting the whole page. It's not. And I, I was concerned it might be off by one just because of the way the stack pointer works, but it looks like it's it looks like it matched up correctly. All right, so if we go back and and count up our cycles, then 
again our loop is just you know our loop is just right here these four lines just like before so we've got now three cycles so four three seven nine twelve we've got twelve and so that's going to equal a total of whatever 12 times 256 is 3072 so we've shaved about a half of a millisecond off all right and we have added a few instructions up here but you know still this is the bulk of it because this is the part that has to run 256 times every time you copy this page um, so even if you add, you know, even if you add those, maybe this gets you up to 3,100 cycles, something like that. You're still quite a bit faster than any of the other routines here. So is this worth it? You know, is it worth it to write this? Well, once you've written it, you've got it. So, you know, now we can use fast copy in a program to copy from any, any block, any page to any other page just by putting the source in x the destination in y and it's going to do this for us we don't have to stop and think about you know we, we don't have to work through this every time we just have this routine so now we have a three millisecond routine basically instead of a three and a half millisecond routine and if we are calling that 60 times a second or you know as often as possible in, in a game or something you know we, we've gained some time we've shaved some cycles off um, whether it's worth it or not is going to depend on how you know on what you're using it for but now that we've got it you know um, we can use it as much as we want so um, I don't know if there's much else to say about it it's I don't know if it can be improved on in any way that it might be that um, like I say this is the important part this is the part that, that consumes the time so even if you could shave a cycle off somewhere up here um, it probably wouldn't, you know, it, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't, it wouldn't amount to much. Um, but the main reason I wanted to do this was to talk about moving, moving the zero page, moving page one. Um, and we did learn something. I think we learned that, um, even if you move zero page, you've got an issue with locations, the actual locations zero and one. And I'm going to have to hunt that down and I'll, I'll put it in a comment or something with this video um, when I find the details on that. But it does look like the true zero and one, you know, zero, 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 zero and zero, 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 one. It does look like those true physical locations are bleeding through when you load from those, even if you have moved zero page to somewhere else. So. I'm going to find that, I'm going to research that and find that out and uh, put that up somewhere. Um, but otherwise, we've, you know, we've written a little faster routine. We've tinkered around with those registers and, you know, you can probably think of other ways that you could use that to give you faster access to when you just want to, like if you just want, you know, say you wanted to write a routine to just fill a block with a character, like for filling the screen with spaces or something. You could relocate the stack to the screen, fill the stack with 256 pushes faster than you can store, you know, 256 times of the stack. So you could write a fast fill routine much the same way. Um, and there's prob probably other things you could do with it. So, but you do have to remember, set your interrupts, clear your interrupts at the end and keep the computer from breaking in and, uh, breaking your program while it's got these things pointed to different places so hope this has been useful and i um i guess i should i, I never think to say this but um you know uh, subscribe to the channel if you want to keep getting regular notifications about these or just check in um, they're going to be at least weekly so i uh, thank you for watching